Go ahead, Marquia. Hey, E-Fam! Welcome back to the Valley Experience. It is Wednesday night, so you know what that means. We have going forth. So I hope you guys are ready. We have a jam-packed night for you tonight. We have a special guest, um, Samus Jasmine Jones, who will be joining us. We have our very own e-pastor, Pastor Sabrina Williams, who will be bringing the word. And you guys still have time to invite your friends and family. So go ahead, let them know that the Valley Experience is about to take place. Sabrina Click Williams. those share buttons and, and just come on in and join us for this powerful word and powerful worship. So I'm, at this point in time, I'm going to turn it over to our psalmist, Jasmine Jones. Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, this song that I'm getting ready to minister is actually an original song that I, I have written, and it's just entitled Jesus. Um, during this time, we just need to call on the name of Jesus because it is the strongest name that we can depend on, that we can rely on. He is everything that we need and more. So in this in this pandemic and everything that's going on, what what is the greatest name to call on but Jesus? So I pray that you all enjoy this uh, this song and I pray that it bless you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, we honor you and we love you and we bless you, God. We thank you for your name, for your name is a strong tower and the righteous can run into it and we are safe. And we thank you for your safety. We thank you for your presence, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you for the name that's above all names. We call you holy and we call you wonderful. Your name is Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, light of the world, you have saved us, giver of life, redeemed us, and you are the Savior to me. Jesus died on the cross, forgave us. Your unfailing love has changed us. And you are the Savior to me. Oh, your unfailing love has changed us and you are the savior to me oh jesus don't be afraid to call his name in your house just say oh jesus I love to call your name. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. We call your name. We call your name, Jesus. I love to call your name. 
We call you Jesus. We love to call your name, sweet Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, wow, wow. That was so beautiful, Jasmine. Thank you so much for blessing us with that. Oh, Jesus, what a name, what a name. So without further ado, E-Fam, the moment we've been waiting for, our very own E-Pastor, Pastor Sabrina uh, Williams, will be bringing our message. So here we go, y'all. Let's turn it over to Pastor Sabrina. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a little funny to be on this side of the speaking, but I'm so excited to be teaching tonight. Um, I really, really, really am excited about the message that's going forth. So I just thank God that I'm able to come and just share the word of God with you tonight. I'm so excited about it. Um, I'm going to start off with prayer. So let's start off with prayer. Father God, how we love you. We honor you and we thank you for this time and this season. Just like Jasmine was singing, oh Lord God, we love to call your name because we know where your name is, oh Lord God. We will find peace, we will find strength, we will find wisdom, we will find purpose. Everything we need, we will find when we come into your presence. So we thank you for your people who are watching us tonight. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. Well, we are coming, E-Fam, to the final stretch of this Enough series. And in the final stretch, we're talking about enough of the struggle. And last week, Minister Stacy told us to keep pressing, and she told us we need to level up. And so I want to ask and want us to think about what's in between the keep pressing and the level up. Well, that's what my lesson is tonight. It is the metamorphosis process. The metamorphosis process is what we have to do it, when we're under that pressure so that we have the ability to level up. And I'm going to read for you tonight so that we can really understand what it takes to go through the metamorphosis process, Romans 12 and 2. And I'm going to read it from the NLT version. You ready? It says, don't copy the behavior and customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Now, oftentimes when we hear this scripture, and I know even myself, we would say, be ye transformed, because that will be that's what we say as Christians. But tonight, I want to challenge us to think, have we really been transformed? I'm going to give you the definition of transformation so you can understand and question even yourself tonight, have you been transformed? The definition of transformation is a thorough or dramatic change in form or appearance. Now, since we know we are not of the flesh, but we're spirit, I wanna change that to say, it's a thorough or dramatic change in form of our spirit. Our spirits have been um, thorough and dramatically changed if we have been transformed. That thorough and dramatic change happens when we allow God to take us through the metamorphosis process. And here's how I know that, because metamorphosis is defined as the process of transformation. It's going from an immature form to an adult form. So basically, if you want to know if you've been transformed, you have to know whether or not you've been through the metamorphosis process that your spirit is no longer a babe in Christ, but now you're a mature adult. So we're going to examine that because if you really have had enough, then you allow God to take you through the metamorphosis process. See, some of us like to say we've been transformed, but we don't want to go through the process of transformation. But when you really had enough, then you'll start asking yourself these questions. You'll say, God, what do I have to give up? You'll say, God, 
what do I have to sacrifice? What do I have to research? You'll say, God, who do I need to get away from or who do I need to start befriending? When you want God to take you through the metamorphosis process, you are not comfortable with who you are. Because if who you are does not re represent who Jesus is, then you haven't went through the metamorphosis process. When you really have had enough, you'll be willing to go through or allow God to take you through the metamorphosis process. Now I hear you. You're saying, Pastor Sabrina, we already know that Romans 12 and 2, and we even know the transformation story of the caterpillar to the butterfly, right? So we don't need to hear that again. Even though that is a great illustration and visual of the metamorphosis process, that's not what I want to talk to you about tonight. I'm here to take you on the J path. The J path is what we will examine biblical people in the Bible who went through a mortal metamorphosis process. And so we can learn what we should be doing and what we shouldn't be doing by their experience. You ready to go on this journey with me? The first person that I want to talk to you about is Joseph. Oh, yes. If you know Joseph's story, you know Joseph went on a metamorphosis process. And so I'm going to read for you Genesis 37, 5 through 12. Now, I'm not going to read these in their entirety for the sake of time. I'm going to highlight things that I want us to discover about Joseph's and his metamorphosis process. And you can go back and read it later. I'm going to start with Genesis 37 and 5. And it says, one night, Joseph had a dream. And when he told his brothers about it, they hated him more than ever. That more than ever means that they already hated him, but he still told them his dream. 35 and 6, Joseph is saying right here, listen to this dream. So here is telling us that Joseph is insisting to tell his brothers that already hate him the dream that God gave him. Then I'm going to skip 37. We're going to go to 38. And it says, his brother responded. Later down in 35, 8, it says, and they hated him all the more. So his dream made them hate him more than it already was. Then 35 and 9 says, Joseph had another dream. So God gave Joseph another dream. And what did he do? Again, told his brothers about it. And then 35 and 10, it says, this time he told his dream to his father as well as his brother. And what happened? His father scolded him. So let's perform a wrong. He told his brother the dream that God gave him about his purpose to his brothers who hated him, insisted that they listen to him. God gave him another dream. He told him, them about that dream. They hated him even more. He told his father and his father scolded him. So he had no good success out of telling anybody about the purpose that God has put in his life. And 35 is where he starts to go through the metamorphosis process because two words is right there. 35 and 12 says, soon after. That let us know that soon after he told these people his dream, he had to go through a metamorphosis process that caused him pain and anguish and suffering. So what is my first point on the J-Path based on Joseph's experience? Number one is shut up. If God is taking you through the metamorphosis process, this is not the time to share your dreams. You have to protect your purpose. You don't need to run out and tell everybody what God told you about you because everybody is not excited about what God said about you. So shut up and ask God, who do I need to share this with or do I just need to have this in my spirit? You know why that's important? Because we are good at watching our enemies. But the enemy is so cunning that he would invade the minds and spirits of those we are close to because we never contemplate what they would do to us. See, if you really think about the things that cause you the most pain, it's not from your enemies, it's the people that you thought would never cause you that pain. 
It's your mother, it's your father, it's that uncle, it's that aunt, it's that best friend, it's that great coworker that caused you all the pain. And the reason why they can cause you the pain because you're running off at the mouth. See, what they don't know about you, they can't use against you. Joseph brothers could never have used this against him if he would have never told them what God had already put in his heart. He didn't even recognize that they already resented the favor that he had on his life for his father. You not recognizing that the people that you are close to are already hating on you because the relationship you and the favor you got with our father. So if you have favor on your life, you can't be willy nilly and sharing everything with people because everybody's not excited about you. So just shut up. Okay. Now, if you already ran out the mouth like Joseph did, it's okay because 30 Genesis 39 and 2 said the Lord was still with Joseph. Now that didn't negate Joseph from having to go through that process, but it still showed that the Lord was with him. But that wasn't the end of Joseph. If we go to Genesis 39 and 6, I'm going to go to the B part of that. It says, Joseph was very handsome and well-built young man. Genesis 39 and 7, again, I'm not going to read all of it. It says, Potiphar's wife soon began to look at him lustfully and said, come and sleep with me. She demanded and then Genesis 39 and 8 said, but Joseph refused. Now, this part of Joseph's metamorphosis process tells us, for our point number two, watch out for whoredom spirits. When God is taking you through a metamorphosis process, you have to sustain to obtain. You have to sustain yourself so that you will not let these whoredom spirits attract you and then you do things that take you out of the will of God and distract you from the purpose that God has intended for you. See, I want us to look at this story because we might be naive in our own self and say, oh, that's not me. But when we look at Joseph, we often say, oh, how honorable that was. Oh, how honorable Joseph really loves God because he refused Potiphar. Well, let me ask you a question. Has the devil ever tempted you with something that wasn't inside of you? I don't think that Joseph didn't have a lustful spirit. The enemy wouldn't have tempted him with lust if that wasn't something that was inside of him. It made us know that he was a handsome and well-looking guy. So you know he probably had more women than that coming after him. So the devil tempted him with part of his wife because perhaps he already had that lustful spirit. So we have to recognize the spirits that we have inside of us. So when the enemy tempts us, we won't be tricked into doing the things that we're not yet delivered from. And I want you not to think that the whoredom spirit is just about sex because it can be. But a whoredom spirit is anything that rules over you and is your, is your God. Whatever you put over God is your whoredom spirit. That's sex, that's sports, that's money that's power, that's possession, that's even religion, and it could be your cause. It all comes in the form of spiritual adultery. So you have to examine yourself in this metamorphosis process and really seek it within yourself and say, God, what am I worshiping before you? What am I putting before you? You'll ask yourself this question because you really want to get to transformation, but you're not going to get to the transformation without going through the metamorphosis process. I want to give you some more of Joseph, but we don't have time for that because in that story, you know, that was not the end of it. He went to jail, had to go through that process until he got to the point where he got before the king. For the sake of time, I'm going to go to someone who we can see what we should not do in a metamorphosis process, and that's Jonah. Okay? I'm going to go to Jonah 1 and 1. Again, I'm not going to read the whole thing. You can go back for the sake of time, but I just want us to look at Jonah. It says right here, the Lord gave this message to Jonah, the son of Amittai. And, one, and two, it says, these are the instructions. Get up and go to the great city of Nebuchadnezzar. And three, it says, but Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction. And four, it says, but the Lord, not the enemy, because the enemy was with Joseph. This one right here says, the Lord 
hurdle a powerful wind over the sea, causing a violent storm that threatened to break the ship. We're going to go all the way down to 15 because we know some things happen in there. People trying to figure out what's going on. Somebody on this boat must have seen, oh my God. Then 15, then the sailors picked Jonah up and threw him over into the raging sea. We go to 17. Now the Lord had arranged, who? The Lord had arranged for a great fish to follow Jonah. And Jonah was inside of the fish for three days and three nights until he got his whole man right. So what's the third point that we need to learn when we're on this J-Pass after we're going through the metamorphosis process? Obedience is not optional. You don't have the option of whether or not you're going to be obedient to what God tell you to do when you're going through the metamorphosis process. See, when God is taking you through a metamorphosis process, his directions is all you have, because this is the point where it's just you and him. You're already keeping your mouth shut. So the only person that you should really be listening to is him. And when he gives you instructions, you don't have time to be disobedient because he know what the purpose is of you following those instructions. See, in this metamorphosis process, it doesn't mean that God won't still use you. God will use you not only for you, but to save others that's with you. The people who Jonah was with got saved. So God still got the glory out of what Jonah disobedience, but you, Jonah still had to go through a rough process because he was disobedient with God. So I just want to warn you in this time and this season that this is not the time in your metamorphosis process to figure out which one of the things you want to listen to with God. No, everything God tell you, you need to listen to because you're trying to get to that transformation. The last person I want to use for this metamorphosis process, they had a great J path and that's a Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, I cannot use one scripture to talk about or pinpoint what his metamorphosis process is. So what I'm going to do is just tell you, he was sent down from glory, born only to die, waited 30 years before he could even begin his assignment. He was tempted by the devil, rejected by his own, plotted on by religious people, all while teaching, healing, and delivering training 12 disciples, being praised with Hosanna one day, betrayed by a kiss on another. And now instead of saying Hosanna, they're saying crucify him. He was voted to be put to death while the real criminal was set free. He was whipped, he was spit on, a painful crown of thorn was placed on his head. He was nailed to the cross, a spear stuck to his side, hanging there for hours, marked and laughed at only so we, Jesus' metamorphosis process wasn't for himself. Only so we could walk in power. We claim our inheritance so we could fill up a purpose. Most of all, so we can become reconnected with the Father. So what's the fourth point that I want to leave you in this metamorphosis process as you're trying to be transformed from a Jesus J path? And number four is when you can say what Jesus said in the garden, not my will, but your will be done. See, when you're going through the metamorphosis process, you will tell God, whatever you need me to do, whatever you need me to go, whatever sacrifices I need to make, whatever cross I got to bear, if I got to go broke, if I got to lose my friends, if I got to lose everything you told me to lose, God, I would give it all up because I know at the end of the day, I'm going to be like Jesus and be resurrected. When I get to that transformation process, I'm going to get everything back that the enemy took from me because he thought that he put me on a cross to die, but you was only letting me sacrifice so that you could raise me up to a better place place where you would have me to go. You have to say, not my will, God, but your will be done so that the end of transformation process, God can trust you with everything that he has for you. And if he can't trust you with everything that he has for you, then you have not completed the metamorphosis process. Therefore, I'm going to say we haven't been transformed. Now, what's the benefit of us being and going through this metamorphosis process? Um, and start adulting. See, some of us not really adulting yet. When you start adulting, you will discover your own calling and you won't be competing with each other. 
There's no need to compete with another born again believer with their calling and their purpose because once you go through the metamorphosis process, you know who you are. So I'm gonna go back to Romans 12 and two and I'm gonna give you some of the things that we need to do because it clearly tells us more stuff than just be you transformed so that when we're going through this metamorphosis process, we can go back to the scripture and analyze it and say what we need to be. If we read it, it says, don't copy the behavior and customs of the world. So that means that we don't have the ability or the option to do what the world do. We don't have the option to say what the world say. We say what the Bible say. Not what we think is right. Not Oh, I understand what you're going through. I know this is what the words say, but, but your only word, your only answer is, this is what the Bible say. You shouldn't look like the world. We shouldn't talk like the world. We shouldn't act like the world. It says, don't. Let God transform you. See, a lot of times while we and let you be obedient to what he says and he will guide and direct you on the path you need to go. The next thing it says, change the way you think. You can't think the way you did in transformation in the metamorphosis process. You have to have a new way of thinking, a new way of seeing things. And the way you think and see only comes out of the word of God. If you don't know the word of God, there is no way you can transform your mind because your mind has to be like Christ. And the only way you can be like Christ is to know what his word says. So if you're not reading your word and studying your word, I want to challenge you that you haven't been yet transform because you're transforming to Christ. And if you ain't reading his word, you don't know what Christ is like. The next thing we have to do after we're going through this process or while we're going through for you, people who has been truly transformed are not asking God And God. And the last thing it says, when you end this metamorphosis process, you will be good and pleasing and perfect to what God has called you to do. So as you're doing this enough series, because we're almost to the end, as we're doing this enough series, have you really had enough? Have, are you really taking these teachings and lessons and allowing God to transform you? Or are you just in a routine and religious tradition and coming on here, listening to Bible study, because that's what you're supposed to do on a Wednesday night? Look, I'm an e-pastor. I love to see our numbers go up. But if I only got one person on here listening because they really want to hear God and see God, I'd rather have one person than a thousand people that's on here because of religion. You shouldn't waste your time listening to these teachings and not going out there and having your life change. The word changes. The word delivers. The word set free. The word heals. So if you're receiving the word, then you should be a different person. So tonight when I leave here, as I go back to my kid, I want to ask you, have you really had enough? Are you really being transformed? Thank you, Marquia. Wow, there was so much meat in that, Pastor Sabrina. Oh my goodness. Just even, I'm just taking it back. Just even from the opening question, when you say, um, do you think that you have been transformed? A lot of people would answer yes to that. Just generally, they're like, yes, I've been transformed, but you really broke it down what it means to be transformed and what it means to renew your mind and this path that you have to take for that metamorphosis process. Yes. So before now, EFAM, I know you guys have questions. Drop them in the chat box. Let us know what you're thinking about uh, what Pastor Sabrina released. 
And if you have any questions for her, um, just let us know. But I'm gonna I'm gonna kick it off. You were talking about um, Jonah and his disobedience. So in in order for Jonah to disobey God, that means he knew the voice of God. Yes. What about the individuals who may not know the voice of God? Can you speak to them and help them um, decipher how they can learn the voice of God? A little more detail on that so they can obey what he's telling them to do. Yeah, absolutely. Because that is the first part of, I say, the beginning of the metamorphosis process. When you first give your life to Christ, you really need to spend time discerning what God is saying. You know, on our e-community page, we're doing that series deeper. And Tony Allen talked about how when we are children, we're trained to recognize noises. If the water is running, we recognize that's water. If the car is beeping, we learn that that's a, a horn from the car. It's no different in our spirit. We have to train ourselves to hear God. And, and one of the ways that we can do that is by reading God's word. Because in knowing his word, we would decipher what's of God, what's of us, and what's of the enemy. So I really just uh, um, allow and ask people to change, um, challenge them to read their word, and then to meditate on God's word and spend time in prayer, but not just talking to God, but allow him to talk to you so that on your daily walk with with him, you'll be able to recognize when he's talked to you because the word tells us my sheep know my voice. No, no other sound would they go to. So in order to do that, you have to spend time with the master. That's so perfect. And the key is reading the word. Now for a new believer, where would they even start in that process? Um, I actually would, if they go to a, a, a ministry to start off with their Sunday school, we call it Raymond Word at the Valley. Um, but I was not um, born and raised in church. I got saved at 27. So when I went to Bible study, that was my foundation. See, a lot of people think it is the Sunday morning um, in there with the pastor. And that is stuff. But to me, that was like more life application. That was... me and it was topical so topics that I had questions about I kind of learned that in Sunday school um so those type of things are really will help me to get it now if you're not at a ministry Holy Spirit is real Holy Spirit is real and when you become a born again believer if you ask God and Holy Spirit to show you what his word is saying he'll do it he's faithful that's great. So the takeaway for that EFAM is Sunday school or Rhema word or just listening to the Holy Spirit. Okay. Right. So we have a question from our YouTube and it says, what is one tip that we can start doing that will help us study the word and build us up as we're studying the word? I would say just be faithful with it. Um, if you're faithful with reading the word and, and don't try to like read these chapters at a time, you know, when you get in each other, oh, I'm going to read for an hour. No, if you even start with just 10 minutes, like mm -hmm. if you just start yourself 10 minutes a day, reading the word, you know, set it like a schedule, like put God on the agenda of your day. You know, yeah. that's the best thing you do. Put God on the agenda and say, this is the time I'm giving for the Lord and give God 10 minutes and, and you'll see yourself hungry and thirsting to have more and more because you'll find God meeting you there. See, it won't just be you reading the word. It will be him meeting you there and answering the things that you've been asking about. I love that. Put God on your agenda and really it's not your agenda it's his agenda because he woke you up on that day right so absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Like, give God his time back that he gave you I love that now Ethan I see um we got some chatting going on here I one person said knowing the word of God allows you to decipher his voice truly I love that yeah. And that's so true. And one thing that I love that you said, shut up. 
<laughs> Shut up. You cannot tell everybody everything because like you said, the people that are closest to you, uh, they want to see you succeed, but at the same time, they're kind of like, I don't really think you can do that. So um, I really love that you highlighted that, that sometimes you just have to shut your mouth. Yeah. Because they can't handle it. Backfire. Yeah. And see, one of the things we have to realize, even though we make ourselves look pretty and we caught, we might have these different successes in life and all these statuses and title, we're dirt. Mm -hmm. And dirt get dirty. Yeah. And so sometimes our flesh just take over and we get our point in our lives where we want to be better than we are. But if somebody in front of us who we may even love is doing it, the enemy can attack us at any moment and cause us to cause pain to people that we love. And so if we're just mindful of that and just know the time and the season of when to reveal what God has told you, then we wouldn't have so much pain and hurt. I love that. And that even speaks to um, the point where you were talking about you have to uh, sustain to ma maintain. Mm -hmm. And I really love that because little things can trip us up and manipulate us and we don't even and we're looking like wait how did that happen i was doing so good like what how did that happen lord and just to recognize the spirits that you deal with or the issues that you deal with being on guard and being alert can help you um what to say derail or not derail but um overcome that obstacle and and i, I see people saying yes i will make room like I'm making space for God and I want him in my presence. So you really, really bless people tonight, Pastor Sabrina. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> my kids next week. <laughs> <laughs> we changing spots. <laughs> we gonna switch up. We gonna switch it up. But man, you are a heavy hitter to follow, Pastor <laughs> Sabrina. You are a heavy hitter, like blow for blow with the word. And it just truly blessed me. And I know it blessed our EFAM. And we just thank you so much for, for giving that word and giving us the J path. Yeah. Thank are, you. There, are there any final words you want to leave for the EFAM when it comes to that J path? Yeah, I just want to encourage people to, um, I always encourage people to go back and listen to it because we might be excited about all of the things that, we hear them, anybody, not just me, but when anybody is teaching, but for really to get in your spirit, go back and listen to the different points that our um, Holy Spirit gave me to share and challenge yourself to go through that metamorphosis process. It's not easy um, allowing God to take over your life and let you go through this transformation, but it is a blessing and beneficial to us at the end. So go back and listen to it and ask God, what do you need to do so that you can truly be transformed? Awesome. Thank you so much for those tips, Pastor Sabrina. Efam, I know that you were blessed. And um, it's such a blessing. When she was talking about the J-Path, she alluded to our walk with Jesus. So um, some of you might be new to our channel. You may not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And if you don't, I want to give you that opportunity to accept him. Um, as she mentioned, he came on this earth just to give his life for us, for our sins. So it's just a simple, quick, um, Father, forgive me of my sins. I, I believe that you um, were born and died on the cross and rose on the third day for my sins. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior. As simple as that, if you just uttered those words, you are now in the body of uh, Christ. You are now a part of the family. And let us know. Let us know if you're new um, to this walk with Christ. Let us know if you want to connect with uh, our E family. We have connection cards that you can fill out and you can join back with us. And if you feel so led um, to help us continue our ministry, consider donating. Um, the work that we do for the kingdom is all because of the donations that you make. So we just thank you. And until next time, EFAM, we will see you on the other side. Have a great night.